darlings, and welcome to The Pit Stop. I'm your hostess, Manila Luzon, and today I'm joined by the sultry, sexy, stunning Mariah Balenciaga. Hello! Hello. What's going on, girl? Oh, nothing's going on, girl. We're just watching some season 11, getting into the tea. Are you ready to talk about it? Oh, girl, I've been waiting for this. The tea is about to be spilt. And it's going to be served up hot. Sexy hot. Piping hot, bitch. Piping hot. Well, last week's episode, we saw Scarlet Envy sashay away after losing the lip sync to Raja. Yes. Now, I think Scarlet made a really big impact. What were your thoughts on Scarlet? I think Scarlet did bring a lot to the competition, especially with some of the acting challenges. She was really starting to grow on me, and I was really starting to get, get into it. I also like that she was rubbing some of the other queens the wrong way, which means that she's doing something right. Right, that's, it's about getting getting under the girl's skin and, sh <laughs> and shaking up their game. Now, Raja's throwing some shade at Scarlet after mm -hmm. she already eliminated her, and some of the girls are thinking that maybe Raja is starting to crack. Right, I was like, and she didn't even want to read the mirror message. She was really really salty for somebody who just won. I love a bitch with a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. but what she's producing in these challenges is not reflective of her confidence level. So do you think that the other girls are starting to catch on that she is just all talk? I think she's definitely uh, been called out on a lot of her bluff. If you don't got it, you just, you got to bluff. You, you got to fake, fake it, fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> Don't I know it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the mini challenge. So we're doing a potato sack race, but it's not about who crosses the finish line first. It's about who sets their jugs a jiggling the most. Oh, I love a good set of jugs. I love me some boobies. They're so pretty. They're so pretty and they just jiggle and I just love them. They look great in a dress and they look even greater in slow-mo, bouncing up and down. How hypnotizing is this mini challenge? Something definitely caught my attention. <laughs> yeah, they were like jumping around, they were like falling out. Who do you think did the, the breast? Oh, <laughs> the breast. <laughs> Nina West looked like she was having a good time with it, and that in slow motion was something to see. <laughs> Silky did a fantastic job. I already knew she was she was gonna be all jiggly. She has a lot of practice. Every time she gets a chance, she is shaking them tatas. Well, Nina and Sugar are the winners, baby, and they win some hair care products for a little extra bounce in their hair too. When you're feeling that extra husk, <laughs> do you agree with Ruth's choices? I do. They were fun. They were fun to watch. It was the mini challenge. They did a good job. All right, now it's time for the maxi challenge. Bad. The girls need to create a farm to runway look using all natural ingredients. That's right, a couture runway look <laughs> only out of organic products, including fresh produce and fresh flowers. And you know what? Sugarcane was enjoying all of that fresh produce. She was, she was just, uh, she was like, oh, it's snack time. <laughs> Chow it down, bitch, I ain't mad at her. I'd also be eating the flowers. I would have been looking for the cucumbers. Oh. This isn't stuff that you would generally make costumes out of. I mean, I wouldn't make a costume out of something that's gonna go rotten. They had oranges, like all kinds of like snap peas. What am I gonna do with snap peas? I don't know. You hot glue a, a, a pea to a dress? Well, you gotta be careful with the hot glue in the corn, it might get popped. Oh. I didn't even think about that, girl. See? Now, what do you think the best strategy would be? I mean, they have like burlap and some denim and stuff, like real fabrics, and then they have the produce. How would you go about this challenge? I would have stayed away from the fruits. I would have utilized the flowers. I probably would have mixed the denim fabrics with florals. You can do nice textures on top of the denim fabric and mix those colors and make them really pop. So now in the workroom, a Mama Roo comes through and she's having a kiki with the girls. She's offering lots of good advice. Which you should take. Which she should take. And then she starts asking the girls who they think should go home. What do you think about that? Sometimes the judges, all they see is what's up on the runway. And so it's good to get a perspective of behind the scenes in the workroom. Do you work well with others? Like, do you deserve to be here? Uh, are you causing friction with the other girls? Well, and Rue really wants to know, like, who's getting along and who's not getting along, right? Because yes. she's all like, so, Silky, who do you think should go home? Yeah, you know Rue likes getting the juice and the dirt, too. <laughs> she, lo she loves it. Now, we've already seen these two budding heads before, but Evie really wasn't happy with Silky saying that Evie should go home because she was injured. Silky said that she should go home because if you are injured, how are you able to 
go through these challenges where it requires you to like do some physicalities and to actually stand up. I'm concerned for her health. I mean, we really should just send her home. I mean, I, we don't want her to injure herself anymore. Maybe next season. Maybe, yeah. Have her come back next season a la Yuriko Hera. Right, completely. Yeah. <laughs> do you think this, the pressure is like mounting like on this girl? Absolutely. Girls? I think that's also a contributing factor to the friction between Silky and uh, Evie Oddly because yeah. you're trapped in this situation, this pressure cooker of an experience with these other girls, mm -hmm. and then there's strong personalities that will eventually but heads. Yeah, and I know that Silky has, like, from the beginning, has been a huge personality. And Evie also is, like, a, a wild card. She's, like, she's a big personality. A lot of She's character. a weirdo. She's got <laughs> unique looks. And I can see how that would, you know, be your biggest competition. Like, she's almost your equal in a way. Friction, yes. Yeah. Now, Carrie made this great point that some of the pageant queens, like her and Plastique and Brooklyn, are held to a different standard than some of the personality queens like Evie and Nina and Silky. Mm -hmm. When the comedy queens can't live up to the glamour, mm -hmm. but they'll be like, oh, but this is my idea of glamour. But when a glamour queen or a pageant queen fails at a comedy challenge, well, sh that might have been funny to her. In RuPaul's Drag Race, I feel like you have to be the most of all of the categories. We are several weeks into this competition and we still have so many girls that now you really have to step it up. You have to step it up in the looks department, the performance department, and especially the personality department because the personality is what makes us fall in love with you. Talking about queens with personality, we have a lovely surprise. Alyssa Edwards comes in and tries to teach these girls how to show some personality on the runway. Alyssa is the queen of personality. Any advice that she might have for you to sell it on the runway, take it, girl. You better take it and hold on to it with both hands. You saw Brooklyn really start to shimmy and she started to feel it more in her shoulders and relax that professional posture and was able to see more of a playful side of Brooklyn. Yeah. And with Fangie, running down the runway, she says, slow, slow down, down, girl, where you running to? <laughs> right, she trying to catch up us. And then she's like, oh, too soon? Yeah. <laughs> I think that the girls really were able to like take some good notes from Alyssa. Alyssa is a personality queen. Everything that she comes out of her mouth is is entertaining. And she's also a polished queen. Yes. Polished and personality. She got all the PP. <laughs> So Alyssa teases that we're gonna get a little bit of choreography, a little bit of hold down line dancing. Uh, who doesn't love a good hold down? What'd you think of their performances? Uh, Kyria looked fabulous. She was front and center and she wanted y'all to know it and she made me learn it. Of course, Nina West has all the personality in the world. She's so quirky, her face is so expressive. <laughs> Always. Always. Sandwiched between that personality queen and Silky Ganache is Miss Raj O'Hara that is just kind of like fade, just kind of subtly in the background. And Evie Oddly. Evie Oddly, she's like, well, you, you can't dance, so we're just gonna put you on the violin on this haystack. And she was going in on that violin. Yes. Like, I had to stop myself from watching Evie going like. Right, so I could watch other people. So I could watch other people. I thought Plastique did a great job. I thought that she really showed off some personality. She looked like she was having a lot of fun up there. Plastique and Brooklyn both went out there and looked like they were having fun. It is runway time. My favorite part of the entire episode is always the runway. Me too. Get into these looks. The category is farm to runway. Now, which was the queen of the crop? Oh, well, I'm going to have to say, without a shadow of a doubt, Miss Brooklyn Heights. Oh, yes. Was my favorite, but she has to share that title with Miss Evie Oddly. Oh, yes. I loved the color combination with Evie Oddly, and they were so completely different because Evie used like all the dried flowers and the shrubbery, and but those colors just popped and drew my eyes straight to her. And then on the other end of the winner's circle is the denim, which is like pretty, with highlighted with orange. 
I love the, the color of the denim blue with the orange accents for Brooklyn was so beautifully done. And just the draping was just so... How she did that was just brilliant. I was like, girl, I want one of those. I know. I just need to get an ass that looks like hers. My favorites were definitely plastique. I mean, she was just on point with every detail, like the feathers, which like were different colors, and then the flowers, and just all of the things put together, the headpiece and so the silhouette, every little detail was beautiful. It's She's, God, she's, she's so flawless. She's, like, she really is, like, just a gem. Well, the one who I absolutely loved, it was my favorite on the runway, was Silky and Nutmeg Ganache. That, I just, I love the sophisticatedness of, like, the cape made of the burlap. Yeah. And then she took the beans and the candy and she completely beaded her outfit. It looked like beads. It looked like a beaded textile. It really did. She did a really good job in the time that it must have taken to count those beans. Yeah, and, and to glue a mother. Oh, and yeah. she's a big girl, so there's a lot. There's a lot to cover. Who are your least favorites on the runway? Fangie, this episode. Oh really? Yes. She was trying so hard to do a different silhouette. I know, and for that, I found it so endearing and heartwarming. But, but you're like, girl, I have to disagree with Mama Ru on this one. I, she wouldn't have been my safe pick, but. I do agree with Mama Ru when she puts Raja as one of the bottom looks as well. I really like the pants. I thought she did a really good job constructing them. It, it sucks that they kind of started to come undone, but it's burlap, so you really have to make sure that you double stitch that, otherwise it's gonna fall apart. Double stitch it or hot glue the inside of the seam? I was disappointed with Akira, especially after last week when she just looked absolutely stunning in that gold gown. Now to come to this outfit with the shoulder pads, I, I, I didn't like the length of the skirt. Yeah, initially when she came around the corner and hit the runway, I was like, like, ooh, I like the colors. I love, I love the way the peacock and that green. The idea uh, was great. Yes. The shoulder pads were just overwhelming that it took away from your neck and made you look broader. Yeah, and it's a design challenge. So if it's not designed well or constructed well, it's going to reflect poorly. The one that I was disappointed in also was Nina. I didn't like the color of the wig. And then the bottom was was weird like the proportion was weird on the on the skirt yeah she... and then the weirdest thing was it looked like she just did not know how to walk we addressed this during practice session with Alyssa. Bottom line, I don't think that Nina West is proportionizing. No. But then again, Nina has that personality, which also like, you know, helps elevate the look. Yeah, so it, it, it almost makes it okay. It's time for judging. The judges critique all of them. Mm -hmm. And they declare plastique a winner. Her first time winning. Is this her first win? Yes. Oh. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. She came out of the personality shell a lot more. Uh, she looked like she was having more fun. So all the way around with the mini challenge and the runway challenge, I think she executed it perfectly. Having Alyssa Edwards come in there and just, you know, having her be that much extra yeah. really, really did help Plastique. I, I agree. Plastique deserved this win this week. I'm buying whatever she's selling and she sold it. All of it. Now I'm broke. I ain't got no money for the bus. <laughs> well, that leaves Raja in the bottom for the fourth time with Akira Davenport. And I agree with the Akira and the judges because Akira said, oh, you might be a performance assassin, a lipstick assassin, but you ain't assassinating me today. <laughs> she said, girl, you got to go. Get to stepping. It's time for them to lip sync for their lives. <laughs> I thought it was an even playing field for the two girls because yeah. the song choice might not be what they would usually perform in the gig. I thought it was an entertaining lip sync. I think, and they also played and sold the song. Like, they both had a lot of personality with it, and it was called Strut, so it's like, okay, cute. Yeah. Let me show you how I strut. I wish there was a little bit more strutting, though. <laughs> To be honest. I mean, okay. if the song's, you know, about strutting, I feel yeah. like we could have gotten a little bit more catwalk. Well, the fourth time was not the charm for Miss Raja. No. And the judges have to send her home, unfortunately. Do we agree with that? Yeah, I agree with the judges. You can't think that you're going to win the crown by being just safe or beating the other bad person. This is the seventh week, and four of those weeks she's been in the bottom. Oh my God. I would love to see Miss Raja perform in real life. I just don't want to see her lip syncing for her life anymore. Yeah, not on this show. 
I'll see you in the bar, girl. We'll see you at the bar, girl. Well, that leaves eight queens uh, remaining in the competition. What do you think the queens need to do from now on to separate themselves from the other competitors? I just want to see more of personality and more looks. I just want more. I can't wait to see what's coming up. Oh my gosh. Well, that does it for this episode of The Pit Stop. Thank you so much, Mariah, for joining me. Girl, it's always a pleasure when I get to see the queen of the pineapple. Oh, a pineapple with glitter on it. Bitch, give me my pocket butt. You know, give me my pocket <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Pit Stop. Bye! Next time, girls! Hey beauties, it's Sasha Velour, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Do you want all the hot drag race tea? Then you better subscribe to VH1's YouTube channel, and you'll have all the fresh videos sent directly to your inbox. Now that's something not to joke about.